The internet is obsessed with Scandaball, but what makes this scandal of scandals different from all the endless reality gossip we're always hearing about? At first glance, the Vanderpump Rules cheating scandal reads kind of like any other cheating scandal torn from the reels of reality TV. Man with history of infidelity commits infidelity. In this case, the man is Tom Sandoval, the girlfriend is Ariana Maddox, and the other woman is Rachel Raquel Levis. Me and Raquel became like really good friends. I don't give a f about but it's also the perfect drama for today's new era of tabloid gossip with its interlocking ecosystems of gossip and reality TV. It's got fan theories, it's got lawsuits, it's got fights, and it's got everyone's attention. I was suspecting it kind of for a long time since the summer. Something felt off. Here's our take on all the gory details of Scandaval and why we just can't help but to watch Dirty Laundry getting aired in public. Tom Sandoval has been a Vanderpump Rules series regular since day one. A bartender and aspiring actor, he'd already built up a reputation as a villain, albeit one who'd first try to put on a good guy persona. I'm not belittling you. I'm not belittling you. That's condescending. It's Ariana Maddox was his longtime girlfriend, although when they hooked up initially, Sandoval was dating a now departed cast member, Kristen Doty. Maddox began as a guest star, but became a series regular by season two. Raquel also started as a guest and was rumored to be hooking up with Sandoval's best friend and business partner, Tom Schwartz. But then, mid Way through season 10 being aired, TMZ revealed the Levis and Sandoval affair. And so now, everyone is looking back to see what they might have missed. It's been going a long time. That's what's so shocking to me. One theory is that the rumored hookups between Tom Schwartz and Raquel were a kind of smokescreen. A thread on the official Reddit board for Vanderpump Rules, said to be from a close friend of Raquel, claimed that the rumor that Schwartz and Levis had made out at Coachella was started to deflect from what actually happened, namely that it was Sandoval and Levis who hooked up at the festival. And Schwartz's involvement didn't in there. In an episode of Watch What Happens Live with Andy Cohen, he revealed that Sandoval told him that he was in love with Levis this January, and that since then it was kind of an open secret among the cast. Tom kind of got flagrant. You know, he was brazen. Since the truth has come out, some more troubling rumors have also started to circulate, which paints Sandoval in a pretty bad light. Allegedly, the affair was revealed when Maddox found an explicit video of Levis on Sandoval's phone. But then, Levis sent legal letters to all the Vanderpump Rules cast claiming the video had been taken without her consent, with TMZ putting two and two together to suggest that the only person who could have taken that video was Sandoval, which would mean he'd be in violation of California revenge porn laws. Raquel? Tell your little Mickey Mouse lawyer that if he has stuff to send over, he can send things to my lawyer. The other question is that Levis has decamped to a kind of rehab. In her public apology, she claimed she was learning things about myself, such as my patterns of codependency and addiction to being and feeling loved. Raquel okay. is in a mental facility. Okay. No visitors. Right now, people are waiting for new Scandaval episodes to drop. Filming on season 10 resumed once the scandal broke, leading some people to suggest that the whole thing is being manufactured to boost ratings. There's always an unspoken tension in reality TV about what is and isn't reality, but the drama of Scandaval seems to be so juicy because it's apparently not crafted by expert TV producers. The way it's captured the public imagination may be because it's the most, if not the only, unscripted and truly genuine thing to have happened in the show's history. The craziest thing about this whole scandal is that so far it's happened off air and it feels like the media and the Vanderpump Rules team are trying to catch up. When the cast found out about the affair, Sheena Shea allegedly punched Raquel, leading Raquel to file a restraining order against her castmate. Sheena, like don't shoot the messenger. Much of the drama seems to have come out of the reunion episode that takes place at the end of every season. Now, before the reunion filmed, Levis gave an impromptu interview to a photographer who happened to catch her on the way out of a nail salon. Rather than the response being carefully crafted or media managed, it appeared genuinely off the cuff, which again lends some credence to the idea that all of this wasn't scripted and that producers genuinely did know nothing until everybody else did. We're just kind of trying to get through these next few steps and yeah. trying to, you know, make amends, hear everybody out. I know yeah. a lot of people are the reunion itself was, by all accounts, a bloodbath. US Weekly reported that the cast screamed at the new couple for hours, refusing to let up. TMZ revealed that Andy Cohen had to separate two cast members to prevent a physical altercation from taking place. Everyone is very concerned um, because they love the show and they want to get a great reunion. I'm here to tell you, you're going to get it. 
And if it's a mess for the audience, then it's been even more of a mess for the producers. In a conversation Tom Swartz had with Sandoval, he explicitly states that he thinks the reason he and Raquel aren't really clicking romantically is because she has her eye on someone else. I have this like gut feeling that she kind of has a crush on someone else. Yeah? While in the same conversation, Sandoval shares some hard truths about his relationship with Ariana. Without the full context, this might have just come across as one friend venting to the only person he thought he'd be able to vent to. But now, everything takes on a completely different color. It's been a little frustrating with Ariana, like, we'll be talking and she just, like, comes at me. Actually, if we look at other reality shows, there's a pattern of the camera missing many of the most dramatic moments. When Frasier star Kelsey Grammer left his wife Camille for another woman in the very first season of Real Housewives of Beverly Hills, the show only had Camille telling us about it later in a confessional. More recently on that show, Erica Jane has dealt with explosive lawsuits about her husband's off-camera alleged misdoings, while Lisa Rinna spent episode upon episode trying to cause drama over things she claimed Kathy Hilton said off-camera. You said you want to ruin NBC. You're taking oh, ruin it. Be Lisa, NBC you're grasping at straws. So does the camera ever actually capture any of the dirt? When it comes to stars like the Kardashians, vigilant fans will see stories about almost everything that's covered months later in their reality shows. Meanwhile, a big focus of all the Real Housewives series is on what happens after the episode airs, how what's said in confessionals to camera might shift interpersonal dynamics, who takes shots at whom on social media, and what's said in post-show interviews like Watch What Happens Live. So the world of reality TV isn't even truly about a show's content on its own. It's about intertextuality, the tabloids, interviews, leaked rumors, and social media clapbacks combined with the highly edited TV show. And it's precisely that intertextuality that has helped push this scandal beyond the Bravoverse, pulling an interest from people who previously may have only a cursory interest in Vanderpump Rules. And maybe its popularity says something more about where we're at in our culture. While we may feel like we're living in a post-pandemic world, we're still living with the repercussions of COVID-19. And one of those is how it fed the intersecting reality TV and tabloid gossip machines. When lockdown began, reality TV was in a really interesting position. The government of Ontario has ordered a mandatory shutdown of all non-essential businesses. This takes effect tomorrow night at midnight. Lots of shows were in the middle of filming and so had to deal with the ramifications of the pandemic in real time. This fundamentally changed the dynamic between the audience and reality stars. Where previously people would tune in to watch how the other half live, now this privileged, entitled elite were all of a sudden going through something that was incredibly relatable. They were asking the same questions, dealing with the same confusion and fears we all were. The Guardian's Wendy Seifert wrote, year after year, season after season, cast after cast, were happily offered the same recycled tropes, dramas, mistakes, and happy endings. So when the real world penetrates this shellac shell, it's not engaging, it's terrifying. I'm also crying about like coronavirus. <laughs> I know I have to go back to New York. I don't want to go. At the same time, with people starved of escapist entertainment, tabloid gossip rose up to fill that demand. The now infamous Instagram account Dumois, who claimed that a cast member sent a scandal related blind item way back in December 2022, was a product of the pandemic. Previously a fashion blog, the pandemic led to its creators soliciting anonymous celebrity gossip, transforming it overnight into a modern day gossip girl. All of the gossip is entirely unverified. Take everything with a pinch of salt, make your own judgments. What's interesting is that over the past few years, there's been a real public reckoning with the tabloid era of the 2000s, how brutal it was and how it exploited celebrities and damaged their mental health. Undeniably, that era was fueled by the rise of reality TV and a new breed of socialites like Paris Hilton and Nicole Richie. But it was also helped along by the increasing ubiquity of the internet and the way in which gossip blogs disrupted the existing tabloid industry. What's happening now feels eerily familiar. Now this comes out from Dumois today? After the mid-season trailer drops, guys, I'm starting to feel like Scandival, maybe worse than we realize. So despite us relitigating that era, are we simply repeating it, but in a slightly different outfit? Since Scandival broke, people have set upon Tom Sandoval as the arch villain of the piece, review bombing his businesses to the point where Yelp removed the ability to review them entirely. This is the downside to our current era where the parasocial relationships people build up with stars of their favorite shows create a sense of entitlement to step in and enact retribution. I really believe he was trying to set up a multi-season arc with this. Just a theory. He's trying to set himself up to look like the good guy. And given we know how bad the last era of reality TV and tabloid gossip was, the damage it did, and the ripple effects it had in wider culture, is it an era we really want to dive back into? Scandal may be fun to watch, but the aftermath may not be so pretty. That's the take. 
click here to watch the video we think you'll love, or here to check out a whole playlist of awesome content. Don't forget to subscribe and turn on notifications.